<laughs> Dodge, was well, that you on the phone? Uh, no, uh, dog on the phone. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Good, because this bloke, I could smell his bad old food breath from here. It was weird. You, well, oh. <clears throat> you all right? Anyway, here's Horrible History Gory Games. You're a winner! If mummies, rats and fleas ain't your thing And you don't like the sound of an exploding king If you're easily scared and you don't laugh at poo You better turn off this show and for you Still watching? Then let's test your brains With Horrible History Gory Games Horrible History Gory Hello and welcome to Gory Games with me, Dave Lamb. And me, Rattish Rattish. Gonna come out now. Are you gonna behave yourself today? Yes. Promise. Promise. All right then. I'm sorry we had to do that. This is the show where you get to test your knowledge of horrible histories with quirky quiz questions and gory games. So without further ado, let's meet today's horrible historians. I'm Kelly. I'm Jonah. And I'm Zafia. Hello. Welcome, one and all. To get things going this week, I've come up with... No, uh, sorry. Sorry, you always do this. You come up with some awful warm-up game that gets me into all sorts of trouble with the BBC. Well, not today. I was only going to suggest football. Football? Just football? Well, Tudor football. I mean, it's got to be historical, obviously. OK. Granted, it is played with an inflated pig's bladder, but other than that, it's just football. Oh, well, I suppose there's nothing wrong with football. OK, I'll allow it. Right, first to three goals wins. Oh, and just like in actual Tudor football, there are absolutely no rules. So you can kick, punch, bite, scratch, maim, pull each other's arms... No, whoa, 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 no way. But that's how the Tudors played it. I don't care. And we're going to get rid of this for a start. <laughs> oh, sorry, Big Tony. I'm really sorry, I didn't... It is possible I didn't entirely drain that pig's bladder. You promised me you were going to behave yourself. I'll have my tail crossed behind my back. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Kelly, Jonah and Zafia, you are playing to win Year Spheres. Each Year Sphere contains a historical date, and at the end of the show, your Year Sphere dates will be added up, with AD dates being added to your total and BC dates being subtracted from it. So, if these were your year spheres, your total would be, Rattus? Uh, can I phone a friend? All right. <laughs> 735. Thanks. The answer is... I know. Oh. Right, and at the end of the show, the person with the highest year score will win an amazing prize that I've selected myself. And that's as fantastic as it sounds. By which I mean not at all. Right, we're off. And to find out what round one's all about, over to the gory grid. It's the measly Middle Ages. Four questions on the Middle Ages coming up. The person who gets the most right wins the first year sphere. And your four topics are kings, castles... Writing and potluck. Kelly, you get to pick first this round. Which is it going to be? Potluck. Potluck. True or false, the phrase potluck comes from Middle Ages pottery. Hmm, true or false? Let's see your answers now, please. Wow, Jonah and Sophia going for true, Kelly going with false. What's the answer? It's false. It comes from Middle Ages cookery, where all the food was just chucked into a pot and left stewing. Whatever you actually got from the pot was just potluck. <laughs> As rats have a similar expression, bin luck. We get whatever's been chucked in the bin. <laughs> well, well done, Kelly. One point to you. Jonah, your turn to pick a topic. Castles. Castles. That is a question from Rattus Rattus. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> is it true or false? When attacking a castle, knights were known to sneak in by climbing up the toilet chute. Typical Rattus question, I'm afraid. Let's see your answers now, please. And again, two falses and a true. This time, Kelly and Jonah with falses. Zafia goes for true. Rattus put us out of our misery. The answer is... true! <laughs> well, I guess they've just got to hope nothing's coming down the other way. <laughs> It'd be awful. Awful. Zafia, your turn to choose a topic. Um, can I have writing, please? True or false? We monks used to write on vellum, which was made from treated and dried animal skin. OK, 
Hellions of Fear going for true. Jonah with false. Let's hear what the answer is. It's true. Ah, there you go. A point each for the girls there. It was usually calf or goat skin. Never rat skin, though. No. No. OK. It's a draw at the moment with one question left in this round. Kelly and Sophia, all to play for. Let's do the final question. It's on kings. Let's hear what it is. True or false, Henry VI of England and James V of Scotland both became kings when they were just nine years old. Interestingly, the girls have disagreed, so we are going to have a winner. Let's find out which of you it is. It's false. They both became king when they were just babies. So at least when those kings were behaving like babies, they actually were babies. Yes. Fantastic. That means, Sophia, you've won the quiz. Time to choose your year sphere. What? Ah, go on, Sophia. Come and choose your year sphere. Beware. One of them could contain a Stone Age date worth a few million minus points. This one. That one. <laughs> Good luck. Push, 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 push. So, Sophia, you've won the quiz, which means you're automatically through to play the measly Middle Ages game. But will you be playing alone or will everyone be playing? Let's find out. <laughs> it's a single player silly game. So, Sophia, it's off down the time sewer with you. Careful, it stinks. Oh, that's a bad one. We're going over to France in the 1400s, to the court of King Louis XI. Louis has just taken delivery of a new and original instrument. It's time to play the big piano. The instrument consisted of pigs of different sizes and a keyboard. Play a key, and a little spike would prick a piggy and make it squeal. The larger the pig, the deeper the squeal. Your challenge is to listen to and repeat a sequence of piggy squeals. The sequence will start with three squeals and get one squeal longer each time. Correctly repeat nine squeals within the time limit to win a year sphere. Get one note wrong, however, and, uh, well, you'll find now. Let's get squealing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's the first sequence. Can she copy that? <laughs> yes, she can. So the idea here, Rattus, is for the pigs to make a sequence of noises and then Zephyr has to copy that sequence without making a mistake. Otherwise, something unspeakable will happen. What an unspeakable thing do we think that might be, Dave? Well, I can't say, can I, because it's unspeakable. Unspeakable, yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. She's doing very well. Every time she gets a sequence correct, we add an extra squeak to that sequence. As you can see, she's moving through the sequences nicely here. I like Sophia's style, two-handed. It's a double-handed press she uses there. And look at that, doesn't it make her happy? And let's, let's just reiterate, the way in which these squeaks are made is that a spike goes into the piggy's bottom. Oh, it's so wrong, Dave. It's right. <laughs> She's doing extremely well. She's going through the sequences incredibly well. She's not making any mistakes, Rattus. Yeah, she's a cheery pig torture, isn't Sophia? <laughs> you have to say, it's hypnotic, this, isn't it? It certainly is. Although, if you think about it, it's utterly harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to point out that these aren't real pigs? Are they not real pigs? No, I'm not going to. The pig piano, pop musical instrument, hot Sunday lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look out! The, the big ones let one go! Well, that was extraordinary. Did you see that, Rattus? I did see a gust of something. It was a puff of something, wasn't it? It came out of the big one. I don't know what happened there. Oh, there's oh, another, another one! Another. Oh, it's Liberty Hall! They're all going for it now. You have to say, Sophia remains absolutely focused. There's pigs guffing left, right and centre. She's barely noticed. But this is the final sequence. She's got to get these nine squeals correct to win herself the year sphere. Here she goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine! She's done it! She has done it! That's the full nine squealy squeaks, and Sophia is queen of pig torture! Welcome back, Sophia. Choose yourself a year, Sophia. Fantastic. Well done, Zafir. That was absolutely brilliant. Now it's over to the gory grid to find out what's up next. It's the awful Egyptians.
Here are your four Egyptian topics. Pharaohs, festivals, mummies, and the underworld. Jonah, it's your turn to pick a topic first. The underworld, please. The underworld. You have selected a question to be asked by Rattus Rattus. Ancient Egyptians believed when you died, you travelled to the underworld, where you faced numerous dangers, including a huge river of what? Was it A, poo, B, sharp glass, or C, fire? Thank you, Rattus. Let's see your answers now. And everybody has gone for C, Rattus. Are they all right? They are indeed all right. Well it's done. C, fire. Though, faced with a river of fire, I imagine there was the odd river of poo too. <laughs> Rattus. <laughs> Sophia, it's your turn to pick a topic. Um, can I have mummies, please? Is this true or false? How long did a mummy have to dry out before it was put in a tomb? A, four days. B, 40 days. C, 400 days. Oh, Kelly and Jonah in agreement with B. Zafir going for C. The answer is B, 40 days. <laughs> they used salt to dry the bodies, you know. It sucks all the moisture out. Kelly, your turn to choose a topic. Can I have pharaohs, please? Hatshepsut and Cleopatra were female pharaohs. But traditionally, all pharaohs were supposed to be men. So what did they do to make them seem more manly? A, play violent Egyptian sports. B, wear false beards. Or C, talk in low, growly voices like mine. All three going for B. Are you all right? The answer is B. The female pharaohs had to wear false beards. Actually, my, uh, my nan's busy growing a real beard. Don't tell her I told you that. We won't say a word. So, three points apiece for Kelly and Jonah. Zafir, one point behind, but there's one question left, so everyone still has everything to play for. That question is on festivals, and we're going to hear it right now. In the early days of Egypt, once every four years at the Hebsed Festival, the pharaoh had to run three times around the palace. What happened if the pharaoh couldn't complete the course? A, he was killed. B, he was made into a peasant. Or C, he was banished. Well, the girls both going for C, Jonah going for A. Who is right? The answer is A. He was killed because he's clearly too unfit to rule. Congratulations, Jonah. You've won the quiz round. Collect yourself a year sphere, please. Hey, we should have made them a year noses. Then picking them would be funnier. <laughs> picking them, picking them. Oh, sure. I think that's best. OK, Jonah, as the quiz winner, you're also through to play the Egyptian game, but will it be just you or will the others play too? Let's find out. <laughs> it's an all-play brainy game, so that means it's time for you all to get off down the time sewer. Go on, go on, Zapir, get in there. <laughs> go on, Jonah. That's it, Kelly. In you go. Oh, head first, though. And she's gone. Now, Egyptian pharaohs like to be buried in style, and what could be more stylish than a pyramid? It's time to play... Pyramid Puzzles! You're about to build your very own pyramid, much like the real ones, only, thankfully, a lot smaller. Nine building blocks, your challenge to work out which block goes where. We've even put the first block in place to help you along. First to finish their pyramid wins the year sphere. So, ready, steady, get building! So, Zafia goes straight for the big piece, as does Kelly. Always sensible. Get the biggest piece on the board straight away. And Jonah's done it too. They've all cottoned on to that incredibly quickly. Well, that's an excellent start. There's a lot of pieces, isn't there, Rattus? Fundamentally, that's the game, Dave. Absolutely, there are. I mean, I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad there are lots of pieces. If it was just one great big piece, it would be over, well, before they started. You could almost say it wouldn't be a challenge, Rattus. There'd be no challenge to be had there. Look at Jonah. He is absolutely flying through this challenge. The base layer is already complete and he's started on the first floor already. Oh, and Sophia's completed her base layer as well. Whereas Kelly, look at that, that's just a load of pieces in a, some sort of hodgepodge of uh, disorder, really. But there's Jonah, look at him. Sophia's on the second level too. They're, in fact, they're, they're two of them there are doing very nicely. Sophia and Jonah on the first floor. 
Kelly, having a look at every piece before committing to that ground floor. And why wouldn't you? Sophia is doing nicely, as is Jonah, and Kelly seems to be getting there herself. This is, uh, it's very, very tactical at this stage. It's all about trial and error, isn't it, really, Rattus? And look at that, Kelly's completed the ground floor. Very nice. Jonah putting his piece, there's Kelly now, she's, she's coming with a bigger piece here. See, Kelly could be coming with a bit of a late run here. That's tremendous, because after a great start, Jonah seems to be having one or two problems now. And there's Zephyr. Actually, she's doing extremely well. This has crept up on us, Rattus. Look at this, she's only got two pieces. Out of nowhere, she's only oh, got two oh, pieces oh, left again. Piece to go. Just the top piece. Surely she can't get it wrong from here. Dave, there is a point to this game, and it goes on the top there. There it is. And there's the trademark celebration, arms in the air. And well may she celebrate, for she hath built a pyramid. <laughs> well played, and well played, Sophia. Help yourself to a year sphere there. Sophia, did you find that difficult? Yes. <laughs> I think you did extremely well. It's very tricky, the pyramid game. You ever tried to build a pyramid, Rattus? No, that would be just insane. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, excellent. <laughs> right, time for us to go over to the gory grid to find out who's up next. It's the gorgeous Georgians. And here are your four Georgian topics. Posh people, teeth, cures and sailors. Zafir, it's your turn to pick first. Can I have posh people, please? You certainly can. True or false? When the Earl of Carlisle built his posh, stately home, he gave all the locals in the nearest village a present of a flamingo. Let's see your answers now, please. Everybody has gone for false. What's the real answer? It's false. In fact, he had the nearest village flattened. Well, of course he did. It was quite ruining his view. <laughs> quite right, too. Don't want your view ruined. So, Kelly, your turn to pick a topic. Teeth, please. Teeth it is. True or false? If you needed a false tooth, your Georgian dentist might give you one taken from a dead soldier. Very good. All going for true. Let's see if you are right. It's true. Teeth were taken from dead soldiers at Waterloo. You know, I think this one's previously owner used to like garlic. Oh. <laughs> How absolutely revolting. So, everyone on two points. Jonah, pick your topic, please. Cures, please. Cures. That is a question from Rattus Rattus. It certainly is, Dave. True or false? A Georgian cure for a sty on your eyelid was to rub it with the tail of a black <laughs> cat. Let's see your answers now, please. Jonah and Zafir going for false. Kelly for true. Rattus, what is the answer? True! And if it's all the same to you, I'd rather keep the sty and my life, for that matter. Hmm, absolutely. Well, Kelly, you've taken the lead with one question left in this round. If you get this right, there's nothing either of the other two can do to catch you. And the final question in this round is on sailors, and it is a prop question. Here is your prop. True or false? Georgian sailors ate food from square plates. Show me now. Zafir's going for true, Jonah and Kelly going for false. The answer is true. And that is where we get the expression a square meal. I did not know that. No, it is true. True, yeah. <laughs> As we can see, we have a tie. Kelly and Zafir have three points each. Jonah, you're not involved in the buzz around. But fingers on buzzers, Kelly and Zafir, because we're going for the tiebreak question. Beginning with the letter G, which king came next after George the First, George the Second, and George the Third? <laughs> Kelly. George the Fourth. You're absolutely right, Kelly. You've won yourself a year sphere. Well done. Everyone has year spheres now. I like it when that happens. OK, Kelly, you're through to play the Georgian game, but will it be just you or will everyone else be coming too? Let's find out now. <laughs> It's an all-play silly game, so off down the time sewer with a lot of you. Lead them off, Sophia. Lovely, well done, Jonah. In you go. And now then, picture a Georgian and you picture someone in a wig with lots of makeup. And that's just the men. Yes, all Georgians loved wigs, but there was one problem. They were home to hundreds of bugs. It's time to play. play. 
flea fling. Loads of fleas and lice will be flinging themselves from a giant Georgian wig. You have to catch as many bugs in your hairnet and wig as possible. The player who catches the most wins the year sphere. Are you ready? Are you steady? Let the fleas fling. Remember, our contestants have to catch those fleas in their nets or on their wigs. Fleas and lice there. Some people call them parasites. I call them friends. Yeah. Look at them. There's absolutely hundreds of them firing out from all angles. I must admit, I didn't think there would be that many fleas in a Georgian wig, but clearly there are. Well, Georgians were notably filthy, Dave, it has to be said. Lice are impossible to get rid of, just like rats, eh? I hear you. Boy, do I hear you. Nets are actually the eggs of the louse, Dave, um, so they are technically one in the same species. Right, I bet you wish some of those fleas had set up hope on your mangy head. Thanks. I do apologise to my co-commentator for calling him mangy. I didn't mean that. But look at the amount of fleas that are being gathered in here. We're getting very near to the end. Those nets are going to get pretty heavy if it carries on like that, Rattus. It's going to give them arm strain, Dave, certainly. Absolutely. None so far have attached themselves to the players' heads. Those wigs remain fleeless, which is ironic, Rattus, isn't it? Time's up. And it's all over, and we have a tie. Welcome back, Gory Gamers. Behind your podiums, please. I can tell you that in third place with 26 points was Jonah, but joint first with 36 points each was Sophia and Kelly. Sophia, if you'd like to go first, choose yourself a year sphere. And now, Kelly, help yourself to a year sphere. Did you know only important people in Georgian times could afford a big wig? And that's where we get the phrase big wig from, meaning an important person. Dave, if a wig goes bald, do you need to get a wig for it? Answers on a postcard, please, and mail it to the rat. No fixed abode, the sewer. Moving swiftly on, it's time for the final round. Over to the gory grid one last time to find out what we've got. It's the Vicious Vikings. No quirky quiz in our final round. It's straight to our big all-play Viking endgame. And it's a scary one. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Everyone, get down that time sewer. On, Sophia. In you go. You know the way by now. Well done, Jonah. Well done, excellent work, Kelly. Lovely. It's 793 AD, and all is quiet in the monastery on Lindisfarne Island. But not for long. It's time to play... Viking Attack! You are defenceless monks. Your only hope of survival is that the Vikings won't find you, so best not step on a squeaky floorboard. Your challenge is to find the one squeak-free path Reach the end of the path and you're faced with two doors. Behind one is freedom. Behind the other <laughs> is... <laughs> <clears throat> a Viking. Find him and you have to start all over again. First person to escape wins the year sphere. You ready? Steady! The contestants have to try and creep up to the doors at the end by avoiding the squeaky floorboard. And the creakers sink. Once they creak, they have to go back to the start and try to make their way across. There's only one true path across this puzzle, and they've got to find it by trial and error, haven't they, Rattus? I think they've got to find it by using their feet, Dave. Yeah, one and the same thing. It's incredibly tense, isn't it, Rattus, as they try to recall where they've stood before and where they may not step in the future. Kelly making some real progress here. The same cannot be said for Jonah or Sophia. Kelly's getting a long way down her path. Look how far she's going with such sureness of foot. Now, look how... Oh! A floorboard squeak just at the wrong moment there. And right back to the very beginning for her. That must be very disappointing for the girl there. Yeah, Jonah sets off again. Here you go. Now, see, this is the problem for Kelly there. She was right at the end before, but she couldn't remember the path. No squeak there for Sophia. No squeak there for Jonah. No squeak there for Sophia. No... Oh, dear. Jonah's off. But Sophia's done it! It's through, Dave. And now she comes to the big crux of the challenge. She's going for the door on the right, and it's the door to freedom! She's free, while the others are going to be hacked to death by Vikings. Sophia, help yourself to another year sphere. Vikings got a taste for raiding monasteries as they were full of gold and silver and were defended by, uh, well, monks, so they knew they'd win. <laughs> yeah, would have been pretty embarrassing if the big, tough Vikings had lost to monks. 
It's like when you lost an arm wrestle to a rat, Dave. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Time to count up those year spheres, I think. And remember, AD years are added to your total and BC years subtracted. Kelly, we'll start with you. Please, could you open your first year sphere? 508 BC. Oh. Democracy invented in Athens. Let's have a look at the second one. It's 1658 AD, the death of Oliver Cromwell. You have a total of 1,150. Now, Jonah, if you can beat that, that will put you into the lead. Let's have a look what you've got. 1727 AD, George II became king. You are in the lead. So if Sophia gets a large BC score in amongst her spheres, you are going to be our champion. Sophia, here we go. You've won five spheres. Let's see what you've got. 55 BC. That was the year that Julius Caesar invaded Britain. 60 AD. Boudicca rebelled against the Romans. You're on plus five. 899 AD. The death of Alfred the Great. 1939 AD. The start of the Second World War. So it's all going to come down to this final sphere. What's it going to be? Let's have a look. Eight and a half thousand BC! The age of the oldest Stone Age house discovered in Britain. You've been torpedoed by a massive BC, which means that your final score is minus 5,657. Which means that Jonah is today's yes! champion. Woo! And that means that you go home with our star prize. And our prizes aren't your usual game show rubbish. Oh, no. They're unique bits of historical rubbish picked out of the time sewers by my colleague here. So what's the big prize this time, Rattus? To celebrate the amazing Roman sewage system which pumped all the city of Rome's poo into the River Tiber, it's a poo-filled Roman fish from the River Tiber! Hooray! Yay. There it is. It's full of poo and it's from Rome. <laughs> of all the rivers in all the historical eras in all the world, why, oh, why did you pick a fish from one that's filled with poo? Because, and this might just be me, I've always found fish to be a little bit bland. Oh. Congratulations, Jonah. Well done, Jonah. There you go. Thank I'm you. terribly sorry. But at least you get to keep your Gory Games T-shirt, so it's not all bad. It just remains for me to say thanks to our champion, Jonah, and our fantastic runners-up, Kelly and Sophia. And no thanks whatsoever to Rattus. Oh, I'm nothing if not constipated. No, wait. Consistent. That's the word. You've been watching Gory Games. Goodbye. Goodbye. Was that show messy enough for you? Or would you have preferred a little more poo? Have you had your fill of blood, guts and gore? Or have we left you still wanting more? We'll keep watching. We'll be back again. With Horrible History's Gory Games. Horrible History's Gory Games. Ciao. What the devil? Leonardo da Vinci. Ingenious. I think so. Bring it on. No one's gonna take me alive. I'll stake my life on it. Count the alarm! Hey! The genius returns. Brand new Leonardo. Gorgeous. Now at the later time of 5.15, this Thursday on the CBBC channel. <laughs> Hey, you lot, it's Young Dracula up next, and after that, we've got another chance to see this week's version of Wizards vs. Yeah. Aliens. It's a cracker. <laughs> a Christmas-themed episode? Yes. <laughs> and remember, on Monday at 5.15, there is a brand-new episode of Wizards vs. Aliens, so check it out. Right. Be careful of this one, folks, because he'll bring the aliens to us with his wizardy ways. Dodgers, for the last time, I'm not a wizard. I'm a magician. They're similar, oh, yeah? but different. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. then, why are you wearing a denim cloak? a shirt, my friend. It's fashionable. Oh, yeah? And what about your pet dragon? Don't have a pet dragon. You've made that up. Oh, yeah? What about mind reading? Can you read minds? Oh, yeah, I can do that, obviously. All right, fine, then. <laughs> what? You can read minds? Yes! All magicians can read minds, mate. That's not a wizard thing. All right, then, fine. What am I thinking now? <laughs> You're thinking, if you crash-landed in a desert, would there be a bin around? <laughs> wow. I, that's just a lucky guess, Ben. All right, try again, buddy. <gasps> 
You're thinking later on, will I give you...